Hi, I am Rachel Collinson. I am known as the Donor Whisperer and I help small to medium sized nonprofits to increase their unrestricted income. Uh, and I'm Sho Walker Kono. I'm a communications coach for activists. Um, and today we're we're both going to be sort of looking at uh, an exa example of communications uh, from from uh, NGO organisation um, and sort of like analysing it a little bit from our respective uh, backgrounds. Um, and we should probably say before we show you which one it is, we, just to make a caveat, we're not picking on this because it's won awards or alternatively because it's already been shredded on social media for being a terrible campaign or anything like that. It's, it's literally just a recent email picked almost randomly from Rachel's inbox. <laughs> so uh, we don't know the internal context. We don't know the outcomes. This is a little bit of backseat driving from people who aren't even in the car, um, but hopefully it's fun or informative or just uh, a good video for us to do anyway. Um, do, you want to do you want to show us what we were looking at, Rachel? You're getting a, a rare treat here. You're getting a peek into one little bit of my inbox. And uh, so there's all sorts of stuff I get. I, I sign up to loads of nonprofit newsletters just in the course of my work, as well as all the other random bits and bobs that I'm into. Uh, so uh, where are we? OK, so here, here we are, Alzheimer's. Uh, this is, I guess I, I can start my critique by saying that probably the Alzheimer's Society is a big enough name that I will open their email just on brand recognition. But I do think it feels quite impersonal. That's the one thing I would say. Um, and my name is there and it's timely and it's quite a short subject line, so that's good. But your September campaigns update just makes me want to fall asleep. So in reality, I probably wouldn't have opened this email. Um, because it's, you know, it's asking me to give up my time and I don't have a lot of that. I need to be really, really excited about something to, to do it. So, but let's see, let's see what's going on here. Okay. So. Welcome to your September campaigns update. Okay. So, I mean, you know, it's, it, this is an okay email template it's nice and simple um pretty uninspiring tagline i would say uh you know we've got the logo here so that reassures me uh we've got but we've got dementia connect support line right at the top and i the reason i'm on this list is because my grandma died of Alzheimer's related causes. And so seeing this just makes me feel a bit sad, if I'm honest. Can I can I ask a, a prompting question then? Mm. Do, do you think the internal rationale that they that, that that's happened to put that that information at the top rather than anything else is because there's been some kind of discussion internally or some kind of mandate that they are a service provision charity mm. first and so mm. At the top of any communication they do, a little bit like if you were the Samaritans, I guess, the mm. phone number, the helpline phone number's got to be top. And, mm. and so would you advise a more flexible approach? Would you advise that that's not the right approach for this kind of uh, communication? Yeah, I, it's the wrong approach. I mean, email, it's actually a really intimate medium. And I've said things to people on email that I wouldn't tell them face to face. It's like kind of almost like brain to brain communication. And so to have this makes it a lot more corporate. And, and I understand that because they are such a huge brand, but I think being on this particular list for the reason that I'm on it, mm. Alzheimer's society kind of need to know what my situation is. And if I've lost someone, they don't need to be showing me this. So I think that shows us how important segmentation is. Um, right. I think, so personally with this email, um, I think they, they possibly, I don't know how good the response was to this, but I think they could have got a bigger response if they had 
started with what my needs are rather than what their needs are. So their needs are to get the update out the door and the September campaigns update. That's more about what's going on in Alzheimer's society than it is about me. Mm. And so, and I, I, I feel that. Um, let's talk party conferences, World Alzheimer's Month 2021 and how together we're keeping the conversation going on dementia. Uh, again, it's kind of, I'm just like... <sighs> It's all about them and not about me. There's lots for me to get involved in. They're excited about me having lots to get involved in. Honestly, I'm not because <laughs> I just I've got so much to do. I, you know, so but this is you know what they're asking me to do here is actually a really effective thing, and it's good and it's well chosen because it's the right it's the right time to do it. The whole nation is talking about social care, um, you know, so. If they had such a, an opportunity here to say, you know, um, like, uh, do you agree with the the social care tax or something like that? And I would have been like, no. And then I would have been right in there and, and much more powered, fired up to, to do this. Uh, so. All right. So, you know, uh I can I can see the I can see the theory of change here. You know, by the time I've got here, which is unlikely, but if if I had, then this, this is quite a convincing case to make, and I like it. Um, all this stuff here is totally superfluous. I don't get to it because I'm just interested in clicking here. So I was going to ask about the superfluous stuff and the fact that it's a September campaigns update. So. Um, I think a lot of people, I remember this being a comms person in-house as well, know that the sort of best practice advice is be very wary of doing newsletter style roundups, but it's so convenient for us, right? Like it's it's a nice internal way to make sure there's a deadline for getting content out and for making mm -hmm. sure that we do it, us, do it, actually do it ourselves and get that information from our colleagues. And mm -hmm. we do see that some people read them. And I know myself, like, uh, I do read some newsletter style mail outs from organizations, not necessarily charities. So why, mm. what, 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 if someone's thinking, oh, but it kind of works for me, what, what mm -hmm. is your sort of reasoning or how would you talk them through why this isn't always a good, uh, good choice to make? Well, uh, I can, I can give you science <laughs> in answer to that. So I worked with a, a client on their email communications to their donors a number of years ago, and they had a very similar thing to this. Actually, it had a lot more content in it. It was a beautiful design. It looked like a magazine with all these pull-out quotes and a message from the CEO and images and different stories. And it was, you know, it's really beautiful. And I had to make that month's version of that beautiful magazine layout. And I was like, oh gosh, <laughs> my heart sank when I put it together. And it took me an entire day to get all of the staff to assemble it, to create the blog posts and put them in this format. And then, and I, and I went to them and I said, look, I, I'm not sure this is the most efficient way of doing things. Can I just do a test? So we sent an alternative way of doing things to a small proportion of the list. And what that was, was three emails across the course of the month, rather than one magazine style format one. And I chose the three pieces of content that looked like they would engage their, the email subscribers best. And each email was just focused on one thing, whether it was just telling a story and no ask at all, or whether it was a petition ask, or whether it was a donation ask. So those three emails, just one topic, and the layout was actually rubbish. Uh, it was just logo, text, photos, link. There was no design at all. It was just slap, slap, slap. And um, we ran a split test. So most of the list got the magazine style layout. Small proportion got the, you know, slightly, the totally undesigned, uh, much more kind of email from a friend style emails. Now, at the end, we looked at the results the three single topic non-newsletter update style emails raised twice as much and got 10 times as many campaign signatures as the magazine style layout email. So 
by doing this, nonprofits are leaving half, fully half, well, twice as much money that they could be raising on the table. That makes sense. So, you know, imagine, and the, the amazing thing was those three emails took me two hours to do rather than seven. Onto the second step in the user journey here. So uh, if I if I had made it to that point in the email newsletter, I would have been more convinced. So I would have I would have clicked. And here we go. Let's see what we've got here. So this is a good format. It's a good layout. Um, I think it's less visually engaging than it could be. It would be nice to see a photo of what these party conferences look like, maybe, so I know where my MP is going and kind of I can kind of visualise it. But that it's okay. It's not too not too big of a problem. And so we've got the text on the right and the form. No, the text on the left and the form on the right. So that's a, a layout that works well. So. I've got this, I'm reading this text here. What do you believe the government must prioritise to cure the care system? Choose a priority and image will be added to your email to your MP. Well, that's quite cool. That's not the usual thing. So back on the, the form here, um, this is, you know, this w one thing I would say about it is that this language is very simple and reassuring and I like it. It's short and it's sweet and it's nice. So, uh, all good there. Find my MP. So, where's streeting? Uh, I mean, this looks lovely, uh, but it's obviously it's obviously a form letter, and I don't know how much Mr. Streeting is going to take notice of this because I can't edit it. I can't put in my own story. Uh, about the you know how my elderly relatives have really suffered, so that's a shame. Um, but uh, and for a, for a topic like Alzheimer's, as compared to perhaps like a topic like international development or tax changes or something mm -hmm, like that, mm -hmm. that, that that's tailor made to be set up for personalization, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, I, I have a personal story that I really want to tell about the broken care system. And I don't have many chances to tell that story. And if people can give me a way to tell it, that makes me very happy. They don't have to twist my arm to get me to tell it. I've got the finish page here. Thank you. And it uses my name. That's lovely. That's a really nice touch. That's great. It's... Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting choice of photo. It's quite imposing. Um, but it's, you know, normally I, I would want an image here where the person is looking at the action button because that's going to draw my attention to it more. Um, which conference are you attending? Well, this is quite exciting. I wonder if they're going to ask me to do something at the conference. Here, so here we go. This is my email address. That's pre-filled. Very good. Which conference will you be attending? Labour Party Conference 2021. So I've clicked here and you can't see it, but it's giving me the option of Conservative Party Conference 2021. But but those those are the only two options. Why? Why? What? And so now I'm stuck. What do I do? So now I'm feeling a bit alienated, to be honest. I'm the donor whisperer, so I would say this, right? But there's clearly an opportunity here for a fundraising ask, which I think is rather than this, uh, or maybe maybe there's maybe if 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 I said I'm I'm not attending, or actually I'm going to the Green Party conference. If I clicked on that, then I could see a donate page because having gone through this process especially if I've been able to personalise my letter, I'm in the perfect frame of mind because I've just thought about this horrible experience that my mother-in-law had, which resulted in her death from neglect and care. And I've gone through all that and I'm thinking, I need to make this change. I'm going to give now because I've, I've poured my heart out to my MP and then I'm in I'm really primed to want to give to support Alzheimer's Society. 
Um, but there's nothing. There's not. I, I'm left. I'm left cold here. So there's a there's a bit of a missed opportunity. Okay, so I, I'm going to zoom out a little bit to sort of see well, like where was this email coming from? Like what what in what context was it happening? Uh, this was part of the Cure the Care System campaign that was launched um, at the beginning of the year. Um, and uh, you can see on the website the hashtag Cure the Care System campaign. Um, and it was launched with a pretty slick agency produced advert. Um, if I click it, you could probably see some of it in the background now. Oh, beautiful. Um, and this ran on TV and in cinemas. Um and uh, and it's so it's something a little bit different that that you've started to see quite so quite a few of the larger traditional charities do recently in that they've put a kind of fundraiser level of investment into a policy campaign, just like Rachel was pointing out with the um, uh, like just like you were pointing out, Rachel, with the uh, end of the email journey. There's no fundraising ask in any of this TV advert cinema sort of out of home uh, advertising campaign. Um, and it's also, it's also part, uh, like kind of, uh, helping to be spearheaded by a policy report, uh, on what their recommendations are for the care system in the UK. So I guess what this might mean for the email is that it's probably part of the second or third wave of a campaign. So that means that there's probably some kind of calculation that they're either targeting different audiences by this point or that they think they've taken their audience part of way on a journey. Although, as you said, they're not maybe thinking about people like you who've entered, mm -hmm. uh, like entered the journey mm -hmm. at this point. So I can talk about also what was going on in the world this week. Uh, you got your email on the 1st, is it, or the 2nd of September? 2nd of September. The 2nd of September. And so I guess the crisis in the UK social care system has been a, like a top 10 news issue for a few years now, exacerbated by the corona crisis, um, but also recently a bit more of that added ingredient that makes it spicy for news editors, which is that it's become a battleground for political fights between the political parties and inside each of the political parties as well. Um, so in the week that the e th this email went out, the Prime Minister of the UK broke a manifesto promise and proposed raising taxes on ordinary people for social care. And the opposition Labour Party had an internal fight about whether to propose taxing the rich instead. And so those kinds of fights, which is what makes things, which is what makes politics editors on the news get interested in the story, meant that the social care story was a top story, like at least the first or second top story uh, for a whole week. Um, which is an eternity in any kind of news cycle, especially when the withdrawal from Afghanistan and reshuffles and other things were going on, not least the global pandemic. Um, so it's a pretty relatively rare time when there was so much media focus on this story. Um, and on one hand, that's great because it means there's more coverage of your issue. Um, and that means there's more opportunities to get into stories. And I remember, and I can sympathise with people who are PR people or media people inside charities, is that people think, oh, your job should be easy then, right? But actually, it also means that you've got intense competition for Alzheimer's Society to be in those stories, not just from the other Alzheimer's and health and older people's charities, which are some of the biggest and widest reaching organisations in the UK, but because it's become a political fight, it's also got economists. You're also going to have the think tanks. You're going to have cultural commentators on the generation gap and generation battles. Um, and also all the political renter quotes who pop up whenever a story gets controversial. Um, so despite all that competition, actually, Alzheimer's Society got media hits in a pretty impressive range of outlets. If, if I look back at that week, uh, everything from... Uh, LBC, the taxi driver's favourite on the radio, um, to the UK, UK's newspaper of record, um, The Times, um, to the progressive Guardian uh, and the conservative Daily Mail. Um, and they were particularly, and I think rightly, happy about getting that uh, coverage in the Daily Mail um, because the readership of the Daily Mail is bang on the, a, a demographic that, that will be important to Alzheimer's society. Um, and also, 
that when the Daily Mail decides to get campaigning on something, it's one of the few media outlets that has a track record of scaring this current governing Conservative Party into actually changing their minds on something. Mm -hmm. So you, you can see the workings of a pretty tangible theory of change in terms of how public relations can influence advocacy and, and, and policy there. I wonder if maybe there's a bit of room for improvement in the type of coverage they get. So because that report, that report that they produced was quite factual, um, uh, quite sort of like statistics or super detailed policy based, um, the coverage that they got was, um, you can see in this Times statistics or uh, yeah, this statistic about the amount of money that someone has to pay from their own pocket for social care costs these days in The Guardian. Um, the kinds of coverage that they, they got were were quite sort of focused on the killer stats, um, but their actual messaging and their calls to action and their sort of commentary on it weren't as present. Um, and so that so I think if they, they might be sort of also thinking we've got great coverage in terms of just like hits in places, but would we have preferred to be to get sort of more commentary or more sort of thought leadership uh, coverage and our messaging included uh, in this uh, in these media stories. So, so looking back at that film um, and uh, and how it sort of portrays one person's story uh, about dealing with their husband's dementia, um, and also looking at the type of social media content they were creating at the time. Um, you can see that they've gone, in terms of messaging, they've gone really heavy on, heavy on the angle of showing the impact of dementia on the carer through mm. their struggles with the care system. The, uh, that, that video has, is, is the backdrop to it, um, is really cleverly sort of playing the phone conversation of this woman trying to deal with the care system while you see a montage of her daily life. Um, and... I think it's super clever. It's centering a different kind of protagonist for us to empathise with. Um, and it's also demonstrating the humanity of people struggling against uh, the inhumanity of, uh, of, of, of sort of austerity state bureaucracy. We were kind of like a, a radicalness of a Ken Loach film. Uh, that like that you, you wouldn't normally expect from a I guess a sort of what you might expect to be like a traditional UK domestic charity something a lot of other campaigners can learn from um, but again like with the PR messaging I think this is all coming up in their own produced content so the stuff that they have control of because either they've paid or more likely got some kind of partnership to get this shown in cinemas uh, and, and in TV ads or because it's going out through their own social media channels um, they, they've had less luck finding vehicles or provocations to make sure that this framing was happening in the social media conversation. A little bit like Rachel, you were saying, they weren't really involving people's own story to have a kind of more like uh, audience co-created uh, personalization with people's own stories. Um, and similarly, they weren't also br getting this kind of framing of the impact on the carer um, or these kind of stories in the main, mainstream media debate. It was, a it was a lot more focused on that killer stat about just how much it costs. Um, so I think that would be that would be the one area where they might sort of, they, they might be sort of thinking, we have experimented with, and I imagine if they've done testing on this, a very persuasive and effective framing of focusing on this different kind of protagonist, the, the carer, the impact on the carer. But I wonder whether maybe they, the next time they do this, because ideally this isn't just a one year campaign, but they've got a kind of a relatively uh, like sustained uh, planning for this. It may be if they're thinking about the next wave, then they're hoping to sort of like get conversation, debate, and maybe a bit of fire, <laughs> some kind of controversy about this. Um, and getting it sort of like infiltrating the conversation so that people are talking about this beyond just uh, the content that they have complete control over is what I'd imagine would be a cool next step for them. But I think they'd I mean, pretty, pretty, pretty well just to get that kind of coverage in a week like that. Mm. Yeah, you, you're absolutely right. I, I think this new protagonist really, really needs to be heard. And as someone who is facing this situation potentially, uh, I can empathise with the protagonist and it's, you know, 
it's kind of hard to watch. Um, and it's a shame more people haven't seen this. Uh, I think they possibly missed a trick by not doing paid YouTube ads because for a lot of people, they, they're they not watching broadcast TV anymore. They're watching, you know, they're snacking on YouTube. And so maybe uh, having said that, I've got YouTube premium, so maybe this was why I didn't see it. Um, but face, I would have seen a Facebook ad with this video in it, but it wasn't, it wasn't there. So, uh, I think because I'm on their email list and their email goes into my promotions tab, I don't often see their emails, but perhaps if they'd uploaded me as an audience into Facebook and they'd showed me this video, which they still could, because for me, I'm at the start of this campaign. I haven't seen any of this. And so they could still get me into that journey um, by, you know, by uh, getting into my Facebook feed. Um, so I think I think charities, because they're so in the middle of the wave, their planned wave of the campaign, they forget that people can start the journey once all of their staff have moved on to something else. And uh, it's I think that campaigns have a, a much longer life than campaigners expect them to. And when you've got something that's this high quality and so moving and so well done, uh, and it's also quite evergreen, um, which is clever. They've made it so that there's, oh, well, sign the petition to reform social care. That that's possibly makes it less evergreen, but I, I'm sure they could swap in and out other campaigns as it as it goes. You know, it's it's a it's a masterwork. It really is. Um, so it's worth getting as much as they can out of it. Well, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Rachel. And uh, yeah, thanks for also sharing how it's personally relevant to you. I think also like for, for me as well, Alzheimer's and dementia is something with a family history that is, is, is a personal thing to both of us. Right. And uh, and I think this is really fun to sort of go through what, what was what was what was good, what was bad comes in, in, in this example. And again, if, if anyone from Alzheimer's Society ever sees this, I'm going to have to do all of those awkward uh, caveats about we're sorry about being backseat drivers on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I realise that there are many factors out of your control when you're a campaigner and some of these things people are maybe looking at and nodding, yes, I told them that and they wouldn't listen. Uh, so, you know, I'm hoping that's the situation rather than, oh, she's being way too harsh. But it's been it's been good. It's been, I feel it's quite cathartic to do this because this is a cause that I support and I want them to be able to do better. So thank you for the opportunity and I hope that our lovely viewers have been able to learn a lot from it as well. Yeah, Brilliant. Thanks everyone for watching and uh, we'll do some more soon. Keep an eye on both of our YouTube channels, social media for it. Yeah, please subscribe to Show's channel and have a look at the Donor Whisperer YouTube channel. I have a few reaction videos and yeah, see you on here soon.